Welcome back, y'all. This is the Blue Chip Breakdown, and I'm your host, Bull. I'm just going to give you my day after thoughts from Tennessee's crushing and devastating loss to the Arkansas Razorbacks last night. Y'all, please make sure to like and subscribe. I actually will have a few cut-ups of some of the plays that I want to just kind of highlight and talk about what went wrong or, you know, how we played well and all that type of stuff. So that will be coming out here shortly after this video. So y'all, please stay tuned for that. So just kind of getting into, uh, I would say, maybe like a 50-foot overhead view of what we did last night. I feel like we came into the game unprepared, and we've seen that with Coach Heifel, I mean, pretty much since he's been up in Knoxville, and I hoped that this was going to be the season that he could kind of get over that hump, but it hasn't happened just yet. I have no idea what's going on, but as I'm going through the film, and, you know, we've got the All-22, so we're seeing different angles. We're seeing everybody, so we have a real understanding of actually what's going on. And, I mean, it just looked like we was not prepared for this game. On offense, defense, special teams, a lot of just head scratch and stuff. But I want to get a little bit more into how the players perform, just like how we normally do. So we'll be starting off up front with the offensive line. I think that, you know, as a whole, I mean, they did not play well. But there's a couple of players, um, Andre Carrick and then Cooper Mays. I think that they played solid for the most part. Now, it, it was some times, man, with, Arkansas's front that, you know, we talked about it all week. Not a whole lot of twitch there. We didn't think that that power rush was going to be any problem for us, whether we're trying to run or whether we're trying to pass, but it definitely was. Okay, those are some big boys. This is a real SEC front. We haven't seen that up to this point in the season, and it definitely posed some problems to us. But I would say that, uh, you know, Dre and Coop, both of them played solid. You know, I mean, there were some times when they weren't really getting as much of a push and really the entire offensive line wasn't a ton of push. You know, it wasn't as much push as we're used to seeing uh, just as far as, you know, that run game, things like that. But, man, uh, just in, like, pass pro, I think that they did a pretty solid job just of understanding who to pick up and at least kind of slowing them down. And, I mean, really, there was times when, I mean, they actually they absolutely stalemated the players that, that they were blocking. So, outside of that, man, we could talk about um, – I'm going to go to John Campbell. John Campbell looks like – He's banged up. I mean, he's playing a step too slow. He's getting pushed back. Um, you know, I saw 40 pushing him back a whole lot. Um, you know, there, there was a holding call on him, which, I mean, I guess it is holding, but you can call holding on every single play, uh, you know, in football, especially on this level. So I kind of felt like that was a little bit of a ticky-tack call. He didn't play horrible, horrible, but he definitely didn't play anywhere near what he's capable of playing like. Um, you know, next we could talk about Lance Hurd. I mean, he's way out of shape. And he's so far out of shape that I think that his ceiling is to be the best offensive lineman on this entire team. But how he played last night, I mean, I would have rather have seen maybe not necessarily Dane Davis, but Larry Johnson. I think Larry Johnson would have played better than Lance Hurd did just because he was so far out of shape. And y'all will see this. I'll, I'll show you some of these clips. But, I mean, he literally, like, there was times when he's holding on to, I think it was 40, actually. Uh, he's holding on to 40, and, um, you know, 40 just kind of, Jukes to the inside, comes back to the outside, and Lance Hurd just kind of stands there. He just looked like he's extremely out of shape. I'm going to tell you this personally, okay? I don't think that he needs to be necessarily going to class. We're paying him too much money from what I understand. Now, I don't want to put a uh, dollar amount on it, but from my understanding, he's getting paid way too much money for him to be going to class whenever he's out of shape. His uh, teachers, all that type of stuff, okay, the school needs to understand he needs some sort of a, a, you know, time off so that he can get his butt in shape. That's what he needs to be focusing on. The two or three, you know, four weeks, however long he's had off, I don't know what the hell he's been doing, but he cannot go out and play SEC, SEC football if he's going to be that far out of shape that he can't even move. And that's about how it looked. Now, maybe it could also be that his ankle was bothering him. I have no idea. But that product that he put out there last night, that is not going to cut it. He's, you know, he's one of the players that maybe did the worst on the offensive line. Outside of that, man, Spragans, he played absolutely horrible. Uh, you know, he had a couple of times where he did a pretty decent job, but outside of that, he's getting beat in his, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's, I mean, just missing blitzes. And so some of that I would put maybe on Nico because it does sound like he can check plays at the line of scrimmage. We'll get to him in just a minute. But I would say overall, man, that's on coaching. You know what I'm saying? That's on not being ready for this game, not understanding, uh, you know, the different stunts and twists and blitz packages that this team will bring to us on down and distances, things like that. But also with the play calling, we just did not do ourselves any favors to give Nico enough time on, uh, you know, I would say enough plays for us to, you know, really be able to win. Again, whenever I kind of go through some of these, uh, some of these clips in the following video, y'all will see what I'm talking about. We left 
like two or three touchdowns on the board and just those two or three by themselves there's more than that but just those two or three was i would say due to the lack of pass protection in this game and it's not all just on the offensive line but we'll get through everybody else so if i had to give the offensive line as a group a grade but well actually before i do that let me talk about dane davis on the um, scoring drive that we had in the second half i want to say that was in the third quarter dane davis was starting at right tackle and he played well he actually looked just as good maybe even better than john campbell did he's blocking 40 the whole time and 40 looked how he's looked on film in every other game that i've watched which is every single one of arkansas's games he looked mediocre he was getting no push things like that so you know again back to the coaching maybe you make the switch right there i don't know but he looked good there i think that's a big part of the reason that we scored on that drive either way all in all for the offensive line i can't give him anything better than a solid c it just you know run blocking again there wasn't a whole lot of push but i think that it was good enough just to get us three to four yards sometimes we kind of got up to the second level you know things look pretty good from that perspective but the pass protection was pretty much horrendous throughout the entire game so I'm not going to go any higher than a C for the offensive line. Now, let's talk about our running backs. I think just as far as running, like just making plays, they did a really nice job. You know, they were kind of, you know, fighting through tackles. Uh, you know, I think that they did a good job with their eyes, finding those creases. You know, uh, Sam, he had at least one play out. That was like a third down. We'll probably look at that one, too. But, you know, he catches the ball. He tries to make something happen. Maybe he tried to do a little bit too much, but you don't blame him for that. At that point in the game, we needed somebody to be that spark plug. He tried to be that. Um, you know, I think the Bishop came in. He ran hard. I mean, you see him just boom, like they're hitting the holes really, really hard. So just as far as running and all that other type of stuff, catching the football, I think that they did a really nice job. But whenever it comes to pass protection, that was sloppy. I mean, it was really bad. So we either did not know who to pick up, um, you know, which is bad, which is horrible, okay? And those people just came completely unblocked on some stunts, on some blitzes. Again, that goes back to coaching, not being ready for all that type of stuff. But also, whenever we did know who to pick up, I mean, we just did not do a, a good job of being physical. Arkansas in this game, y'all, they were the more physical team. Um, and that is, I mean, that's not great, but I do think that Arkansas is a team that's good enough moving forward that maybe, I mean, they might be able to win out, uh, you know, for the rest of the season. Maybe now they have that confidence. But we told you coming into this, this is a real SEC team. And, in the SEC, especially on the road, you never know what's going to happen. We got Arkansas's best shot. I think that we're going to get every team's best shot for the rest of the season. So we've got to go out and give our best shot and perform at our best. Our running backs didn't do that, okay? You could throw them into that same group uh, with, the, with the offensive line. So all in all, um, you know, I would probably give them, I'm going to say a C as well, uh, just because that pass protection was absolutely terrible. I also want to see us... Rose had in more bodies at running back. You know, there's a whole lot of things that I feel like this team can do. Kind of like how we did uh, versus versus NC State, where we get into that, you know, tight set with uh, with two tight ends. And, you know, we just run the ball, run the ball, run. I think that we could have done that and maybe had some more success in this game. But all the talk maybe about, man, Nico's got to use his arm and all that. Maybe this was the wrong game for that, just because we'll get to Nico here in just a minute. But I, I think that maybe we could have done a little bit more of that actually let's go ahead and talk about those tight ends i think that as far as blocking goes they did a pretty solid job like you could tell that they were trying hard and really I'll, I'll i'll say this it felt like pretty much everyone was playing with maximum effort as far as who we've talked about up to this point lance heard I, I i don't i don't think that he was i mean i, I don't know what the hell he was doing it, it was times when he just like he was he just looked lazy and look i love all of our guys but i'm just gonna call it like i see it you know this is tough love he did not do his best. So he would be the only one that I think maybe just did not look like he was giving maximum effort, but everybody else did. With all that being said, okay, Arkansas was probably the more physical team for most of this game. Um, so, you know, tight ends, they, they had some really nice blocks, okay? They had some nice, you know, kill shots and all that, but it wasn't like how it's been in the past where people are going all the way down. Now, maybe a few pancake blocks, but it just, I mean, you know, Arkansas was just strong. You know what I mean? Like we're trying to hit them and they're strong wasn't a ton of movement but i would say just as far as blocking goes top to bottom it was pretty solid i would probably give him about a b like a solid b and just as far as blocking goes now catching passes i don't know how many targets they got i can only think of the, the one might have been in the second half third or fourth quarter going to kitzelman where he's double covered um you know i you know i think that that was third down and he didn't make that catch it did hit him right in the chest it was a tough catch to make but we expect for you to make those catches, right? So 
you know, uh, just as far as pass catchers, you know, they didn't get enough opportunities for me for me to be too hard on them, but it just it just wasn't great. And I felt like coming into this game, Arkansas's personnel matched up well with what we like to do. So, you know, I felt like the tight ends wouldn't be as much of a passing threat in this game, um, and they just weren't. Because whenever you have some really athletic linebackers that can cover our guys, you know, it just, it just makes things a little bit more difficult. So I would say all in all uh, with the Titans, I'm going to give them a B minus. Now let's flip the page right here um, to the wide receivers. I think that they did a pretty solid job. You know what I mean? Now, there was a couple of drops. It wasn't perfect. But just as far as doing what they were supposed to do, um, you know, within our scheme, I think that they did that. Again, man, there are some things that we could do with our route combination. We've talked about that a lot that needs to get implemented. We've got to find some ways because what Arkansas did, it wasn't a 3-3-5 that they went to uh, for, I would say, maybe about 40% of the game, or it might have been more than that. It was a 3-2-6, which is a dime. And we had talked about that pregame. Will they, you know, go to that three-man line? I mean, you know, I know I keep on saying this, but again, back to the coaching. Whenever you see teams doing that, you've got to get into some run sets and you've got to bunch things up and you've got to run the football right at these guys. Because whenever you, so basically a 3-2-6 means that you have six secondary players in. Secondary players, they're fast. They're going to be good in coverage, but they're not going to be good versus bigger bodies stopping the run. If you run right at them, if you run right at all that speed, you should be able to have some success we found it some, but I don't think that we went back to that enough. Either way, okay, my whole point talking about that with these wide receivers is we kept on trying to pass the uh, football when, you know, I mean, they were dropping eight. It was a lot, it was a whole lot of people in coverage. And, you know, if you kind of couple that with the fact that Nico didn't have a whole lot of time to go through all of his reads and things like that, I felt like maybe the wide receivers could have tried to work back towards Nico some more or just find some ways to get open didn't see that enough. I think that they blocked well, you know, um, I, I think that they, again, I think that within the scheme, within what, they, within what they were asked to do, they did a pretty solid job. So I would give the wide receivers a solid B. Now let's talk about Nico, okay, just to finish up with the offense. I think that Nico, I mean, this is, this is the worst game that I've seen him play, period. You know, he did not have a good game at all. And there's several times that, yeah, he didn't have time to go through his reads and all that type of stuff. But there was times when, you know, it, there were some there was some pressure, but it's just because Nico is staring down one guy. He's pre-snap. This is where I'm going to go. And he's not kind of going through all of his reads. OK, some of those touchdown passes that I talked about that Tennessee missed on that was from Nico just not scanning the entire field. He's got to be a lot quicker with that. OK, he's got to. OK, I'm, this is where I think things might go. You look there. If it's not perfect, you look. You look, right? Like you got to go through it. Boom, 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 boom. It's got to be very, very quick. And you have to have an understanding of, it, of exactly what the defensive coverage is, where the pressure is coming from. That's something else. Now I have an understanding. I think that he might have said it uh, in his, in his post-game presser that he's got to do a better job of setting that type of stuff up, of knowing where the blitzes are coming from. So now that I know that he can do that, he didn't do a good job of, uh, you know, identifying that by any means. You know, there were several times that Arkansas was bringing six or seven. You got to figure that out and make sure that everyone's on the same page, know who's blocking who, and know who the hot read is. He has not done that. He's a red shirt freshman. He looked like it last night. Um, you know, so all of those things, you know, those are those are all some pretty major issues with Nico. He wasn't very accurate. Yeah, um, you know, some of the time, you know, some of those passes that, you know, again, were touchdowns, he either, I mean, he just he just missed them. So you've, you've got to be more accurate. You've got to be able to make plays. And I think that the staff as a whole, at this point, man, we got to win all these games. There's not a game moving forward that Tennessee can lose if we want to still make it to the playoffs. We got to win every single one of them. So we can't, like, bubble wrap Nico anymore. We've got to open things up a whole lot more. Rollouts, things like that looked good. Um, you know, route combinations, switching things up with the formations and sets. That would help because... It, it just, it makes it easier on a quarterback um, whenever it's just not basic. Hey, look, we're going to spread them out. It's straight up and down. You know, you've only got one or two reads here, which happens some of the time. Just all of those types of things. So it's hard for me to, you know, necessarily go too far on Nico. But at the same time, man, all the, you know, fumbled snaps and stuff like that in critical moments, running, running out of bounds 
um, you know, missing people on that final drive, just so many things that, again, man, we're paying Nico just like we're paying Lance Hurd and everybody else to perform at a certain level. They've got to get there. Like, you've got to stop over-processing. You just got to let loose and play football. It's okay if you make uh, if, if you make some mistakes, but just do it full speed, right? Just do it full speed. Do it at your best. I think that this team's ceiling is a whole lot higher whenever we're doing that and not playing, uh, you know, as conservative as we've shown really this entire season. So I'm going to give Nico, I would give him, oh man, I'm going to give him a C minus just because I think that there's a lot that he could have done better in this game. And if he did, I mean, if, if he even played, I would say at like a B level, Tennessee wins this game, man. You know, Tennessee wins with everything else that, I, that we just talked about with this offense and that, that we're about to talk about with this defense. Tennessee would have won this game. So let's flip the page to the defense. Let's talk about our defensive line. There were some good things. You know what I mean? Like it, it was some, um, there was a little bit of pressure. You know, I think that Arkansas's offensive line, they played great. They played better than they played this entire season. Um, you know, I've, I've seen them play solid though. They're not just an absolutely horrible offensive line. I think that some of it, uh, you know, we talked about the pressures from their right tackle. I think that he had 21 coming into this game. So we felt like, hey, that's a guy that we're going to try to, you know, bring some pressure to, you know what I'm saying? Mix some things up, blitz off of his side, especially on the edge where we've seen him just not even pick those blitzes up. I don't, you know, I don't remember us doing that. You know what I'm saying? I've gone through the film several times, but, you know, sometimes you got to go through it like 10 times before you can sit. So I just, I don't remember us doing that. Again, it goes back to the coaching. It goes back to the scheme. I feel like we really let Bobby P dictate the, uh, you know, pace of this game way too much. We got to be the ones that dictate. Now, there were some times that we brought seven, uh, you know, that we brought six, but I don't think that we did that enough. So, again, man, back to our uh, front four. I think that just as far as, you know, being where they're supposed to be, kind of taking up blocks, they did an okay job. Um, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of push. Actually, again, man, Bobby P, his scheme, understanding that, especially our tackles and really everybody up front, we want to get vertical, right? Like, we want to get penetration up front. And they had some plays that just set us up for that, where they kind of like let us get up the field. And now the offensive line for uh, for Arkansas doesn't have to move us. All they have to do is just wall us off. And there were some nice little creases right there. So you can't be too mad, especially at the effort. I think that the effort was there, no doubt. It's just kind of back to sometimes you got to be able to switch up how you play or something. Back to the coaching. So I think that the uh, I think that the front played decent within our scheme. Um, actually, I'll say that they played pretty well within our scheme. Some of our tackles did get moved. Some of them got pancaked. Uh, you know, our our ends for the most part were able to keep uh, keep Taylor Green bottled up, which I know that was probably the main point of emphasis in this game. We did a really nice job of that. Um, you know, so I I actually think that they played pretty solid. I'm gonna give them, I would say a B uh, overall. And you know, I'm talking about all all four of them. We did have two sacks. You know, there were several times, it, it, was, it was a whole lot of three-step drops, which just means that the ball is getting out of Taylor Green's hands quickly or whoever the quarterback is, getting out of their hands quickly. Um, so we don't have as much of an opportunity to get to them. But, um, you know, there, it was a couple of times where we did have opportunities and it wasn't as much of a push. So um, I'm not going to go any higher than a B for those guys. But, you know, I do like their effort. I, you know, I like the way that they're just kind of flowing around. If the play is way, you know, to the left or way to the right they're still flowing still trying to help out so i think that that's good you know again the effort is definitely there let's move on back to the second level let's talk about those linebackers they played horrible i mean pretty much all of them there were some good things right i mean it was a couple of good things but just as far as getting into our uh run fits terrible job you know like we talked about that some last night in the uh, post game show terrible job i mean i don't know what the hell they were doing like seeing okay things are kind of going this way or at least Arkansas is making us think that the play is going to the left, we'll say. We're flowing over there way too hard, way too quick. We're not being patient. We're not using our eyes uh, the, the correct way. Also, um, you know, just in basic run fits, sometimes I'm seeing linebackers just kind of, you know, going right, uh, you know, going right over maybe a tackle or maybe an end. But that's their, like, that's their guy. You need to go to your guy. You need to be able to see where are the holes opening up at. They didn't do a great job of that throughout the entire game. Um, but again, you know, it, it was it was solid in some spurts. Um, so, you know, I think that they did kind of okay for the most part. Pass coverage really wasn't great. The pass rush, 
you know, that wasn't great. Um, again, I like the effort. I think that we played hard. There's a couple of things that I really did like. Arion Carter is flowing to the football a little bit better. I think he's doing a tiny bit better job of kind of beating blocks, but he's got to, again, he's got to use his eyes a whole lot better. I think that especially to start this game off, he's overthinking stuff. Just kind of play more off of instincts. Same thing could be said about Ken and Pilly. Um, you know, I think that JT, he came in, um, you know, he looked a step slow, looked like he was getting blocked. Um, you know, he didn't look strong enough all the time. Now, he did make a really nice stop on Taylor Green. I think that might have been a third and one or a fourth and one. That was huge. You know what I'm saying? So on that one, you just saw him, you know, just playing with his instincts. Linebackers have got to play with instincts. Caleb Perry, he looked, he looked awful. And, you know, I, I don't know if he did anything well. Um, you know, Jalen Smith, he came in. He didn't look good. Uh, you know, I think one of their drives, actually, it might have been on, on one of their scoring drives. He was in for, for most of that drive. And he was a step too slow. Uh, you know, he looked too weak. Uh, just, I mean, everything. So linebackers, all in all, man, I, I don't want to take up too much time on it. Just bottom line is they didn't play nearly, nearly good enough, you know, at all uh, for us to be dominant in this game. Um, so I'm going to give them a C minus overall. Now, let's talk about our secondary pieces. I think that our cornerbacks in coverage, they were actually in pretty tight covers. Well, really, I'm going to say, um, man, Ricky Gibson. He was playing off. It was times when we was playing man, and he's playing too far off. He took some really bad angles. He didn't tackle well, um, you know, hurt us a whole lot, several really big plays. He's not tackling well, playing way too, uh, way too far off. Come up and challenge these guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need you 8, 9, 10 yards off the freaking line of scrimmage or off of the, uh, you know, wide out. Be a little bit, I mean, come up just a little bit more than that. If, if you don't want to come up and press them, that's fine. But don't be that far off, okay? And if you are going to be that far off, come up and make tackles. Jamal McCoy, he, he was actually in good coverage, I would say, for really most of the game. There was a couple of times where he did let the wide receiver get to the inside of him whenever we're playing man. And we've talked about that. You know, members of this channel understand it because we've pointed that out several times. We said, look, this is something that you just can't do. Hopefully it doesn't, you know, come back to bite us as we get into the real SEC play. And I think that it did, maybe not in a major way, just because that's kind of, it's not the easiest thing by any means to stop. But I think that we could have done a little bit better job at stopping some of those inside routes. So he didn't do great there. Um, but just, just as far as his pass coverage down the field, he was, in, he was in a good spot, I would say, for most of the game. Really, all the passes that was called on him, he was in a really good spot. It was a perfect pass. There's nothing that, that and look, perfect offense beats perfect defense. 100% of the time, whenever they do things perfect on offense, you just can't stop it. So it was several passes by Taylor Green where he drops it in a perfect spot, and it was a really good route um, by number two. So, I mean, you know, there's not much more that you can do about that. So I'm, I'm not going to be too hard on him. I know some people are talking about, well, he needs to kind of turn his head around. I, I understand what people are saying with that, but it's something that is so overused. You, you have to be in a certain spot playing uh playing cornerback before you can turn around because if you're not in that spot and you turn around now we're talking about well you know maybe they catch the pass and we stop them and it's 20 yards or it's a it's a touchdown right like you you just can't do that so that's just that's not very realistic that is you know probably the second most difficult position to play in football for sure is one of the most difficult positions to play in all of sports it's hard to do you can't just turn around just because you know what I mean? There's certain things uh, that you're reading. There's a certain place that you have to be in before you can kind of turn around and look for those footballs. So I think that he played well for the most part. I mean, it, it wasn't great. So cornerbacks, I think that, um, you know, all in all, they they did okay. Six did come in, and he wasn't, I mean, you know, he same thing. I think he had some really tight coverage. It was a perfect pass. You know, it was a perfect catch. What, what the hell are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? So I think that our cornerbacks – Played well. Coverage was tight for the most part. Um, Ricky Gibson is just, you know, he just didn't tackle well. So I'm going to give them, again, a solid B. Just as far as our um, star players, I think that they played well. You didn't hear a whole lot from them, which means that they are doing their job. Came up, tackled well, uh, you know, set those edges well. Um, so I would give them, I'm going to go B plus for them. You know, I think that they did, I think that they did pretty solid. You know, I think that they did what they were supposed to do within the scheme of our uh, game plan. Now, just as far as the safeties, 
I think that Will Brooks, you know, he looked good in coverage. He, did, you know, did a pretty nice job coming down and filling. Andre Turntine didn't love what I saw from him. It was a couple of times. We also talked about this last night where he's supposed to be in coverage and he's trying to get into a damn run fit. Why would you do that? You're a safety, buddy. You've got to play coverage first. You've got to do your job. So, you know, he missed, uh, you know, he had a guy wide open just based off of that. He takes horrible angles. Okay, that's something that needs to get corrected. And I'm talking about not today, but yesterday. We need to get that fixed with him. Seeing that in every single game throughout the entire season. Takes horrible angles. Now, everything wasn't terrible from um, from Turrentine. He had some, you know, he had some nice plays. But, I mean, I would just give him by himself probably like a C- minus, just because you got to do your job first. And he didn't always do that. And he did it in times that hurt us in a very, very major way. Um, I think that Kobe Thomas, I saw him flash some, you know, he did some pretty nice things. Um, Christian Charles, I saw him do some pretty nice things as well. So safeties all in all, uh, you know, again, just kind of going back to within the scheme of our game plan, I think that they are, I'm going to go at about a B minus, you know, I don't think that they played horrible by, by really any means. It was really more of Andre Turrentine just being, just doing stupid stuff sometimes. Um, and so I think that that's it right there. Uh, you know, for every single spot on this team, it just, it was a day that I think that we got out coached. I think that we just weren't ready for this game. Like, you know, like, like we talked about earlier, um, we just were not ready for this game. I have no idea why, uh, but there's a whole lot of things that I feel like Tennessee can get fixed. And it's kind of like small things. If we would have done, I would say, I mean, you could look at the score and kind of tell this. But if Tennessee played with, I would say, about 5% more focus, we would have won this game. If Tennessee came in and played their best, we would have blown Arkansas out. But coulda, woulda, shoulda. You got to bring it every single weekend. We just didn't do it. And, you know, whenever I say us, I'm talking about from top to bottom. And that starts with Coach Heupel and with, you know, the coordinators on the staff, everybody. Just we were not ready. The players weren't ready. Um, you know, we kind of got pushed around some, which is all, I mean, you know, you never like to see that, but I believe that this team will bounce back. This is probably exactly what we needed. Maybe we started to, you know, fill ourselves a little bit too much. We're going to move forward. I would expect, okay, I'm going to hope and pray that we come out next weekend and we just absolutely dominate Florida. And, you know, we're not going to necessarily turn the page to the Florida game just yet, because like I said, I will have some clips coming out. Just kind of breaking this thing down a little bit more. That will be for everybody. Um, and we'll go through our normal ones and twos. For the members of this channel, you know, we'll go through everything and y'all can see exactly what Tennessee did well. Um, and, you know, where we need to get a little bit better at with some more details. But thank y'all so much for sticking all the way to the end. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share it with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans. We'll see y'all in just a minute. Thanks. Peace.